welcome to this week's edition of A Closer Look. I'm Mark Shine. This is Mark Miller, and you have your Harvard shirt on for a reason. That's right, 133rd playing of the game. Yale at Harvard. Harvard's going for the fourth Ivy League championship in a row. About that. Go Crimson. Go Crimson. There you go. And because we want to brag just a little bit, thanks to Garrett Mansfield, gave me a little bit of information. Before the playoffs started, we picked teams that we thought were lower seeded that could go distance in the playoffs. We got Crestview, they're in. We got Fort Recovery, they're in. We got Hartley, they're in. And we got Trotwood Madison, they're in. We hit all four of them. All right. They're still deal. going. You put any money on it? No. no. <laughs> we should have. I did find this out, though. Uh, People Magazine named their top sexiest man of the year. No, we're not there. We're not there. No, we're not there. No. It just means People Magazine does not wish to watch a closer look as they should. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I would agree with that either, though. Mm, I don't know. All right. Uh, we're going to look at some teams who have made playoff runs this year, and their seasons came to an end last weekend, and look at how they finished up their season. We're going to start with the episode of Valley Rams and how they finished up their season. USV started 1-3 and three this year, then they went on a six-game winning streak in the conference that allowed them to tie for the conference championship. Then they got a playoff win over Troy Christian, 27-21. That brought them with a seven-game winning streak, during which time they averaged about 48 points a game. They did, however, lose their playoff game to Minster, 41-8. They got into some real injury situations to their quarterback, Austin Sloan, their running, uh, quarterback, Jason Moose, their running back, Austin Sloan. So some injury situations kind of took away their opportunity to win this one. However, in their conference, Offensive Player of the Year, Austin Sloan. Defensive Player of the Year, Trey, Trey Freitag. Coach of the Year, Josh Spencer. A really good year. Four other guys made all-conference first team. Congratulations to USB Rams this year. Let's take a look at Delphus Jefferson. They lost to Mechanicsburg in the playoffs, but finished at 10-2. What a great year. Three-time NWC champs. And a lot of awards for them, too. Hunter Binkley was a Northwest Conference Offensive Player of the Year. Jay Stockwell was the Defensive Player of the Year, and Chris Summers, the Coach of the Year. He has made that a dominant program. What a season for the Jeff Cats. All right, let's move on then to Arlington. Arlington was 8-4 and four when the season came to an end, 6-2 and two in the Blanchard Valley Conference for Coach Josh McGrain. They averaged 32 points a game over their last eight games, really got it going. In their six BBC wins, gave up less than eight points per game in their six BBC wins. Uh, they defeated Lucas 21-19 in the opening week, lost to Crestview 28-7 last week. Congratulations, Georgia, Jordan Berger, first team offensive line in that conference. Remember, they have 12 teams in their conference. It's tough to make first yeah. team in that conference. Defensive line of the year, Logan Spire. Caleb Price was also first team all-conference for Arlington this year. Indian Lake, they finished up 11-1 until that playoff loss. Undefeated, they lost in the playoffs to Ottawa Glandorf the last two years. They won the league, the Central Buckeye Conference Player of the Year, Alex Jacobs, second time around. Dave Coburn has made that program a winner. They lose a lot of players. We'll see what they're like next year, but a real good run, and they finish 11-1 this year. All right, let's go on to St. Henry, 7-3, 6-2 in the MAC. They lost to Coldwater in regular season, 14-21, but they beat Minster and Fort Recovery, two teams that are still in the playoffs. Beat Spencerville last week, 37-22. Then they ran into that very good Marion local team, Lost to them 22-0. Part of the reason is they lost their quarterback to injury. It's tough enough to score on the Flyers, let alone with your quarterback on the bench due to injury. Blay Coyne, first team, wide out in the conference. Colin Mesher, Mitch Sweeterman, Tyler Schlarman, all first team, all conference in the MAC. Congratulations to St. Henry finishing the season at 8-4. Play of the week, huh? Play of the week. You're All up, right, man. we've got we've got three of them we're going to show you. The first one is a kickoff return. This is St. Mary's, and they're playing Franklin. Now, number seven, Eric Spicer gets it. Look at the blocking up front. That's the old wedge. That's right, Coach Shine. You called it the wedge. They're not allowed to hold hands anymore, but they block, and then the speed just takes over. They give him the crease, and then you get it to the kid that can run, and Eric Spicer takes that one, the distance for a touchdown. Now we're going to see Eric Spicer on a punt return. They say special teams can flip the field and be big difference makers. That's because St. Mary's works at it. This doesn't happen by accident. Look at the yellow hats on the black hats. Give him a chance to get up in there. Now he finds that crease and speed takes over. Didn't quite have the angle to go with the distance. Or maybe he's tired. He did a lot of running in that game. But a couple of great returns by Eric Spicer from St. Mary's. Now let's go over to the Marion Local and St. Henry game. This was an option call. You're going to get to see it again in slow motion. It ends up going down to the two or three yard line. But watch Dwayne Ligers, 
the quarterback. The mesh point is not very good with Mr. Holman. The ball hits the turf, bounces up, he gets tackled, he throws it forward, and there stands Nate Moeller, who makes, makes a nice run down the sideline. They ended up putting that one in and started to separate themselves a little bit. A couple of pretty cool plays last weekend that we wanted to show you. Spicer, I get 320 all-purpose yards at halftime. Yeah, he's not yeah, bad. Yeah, he's not bad. <laughs> Pretty good player. All right. Yeah. Well, Mark, this week on our question mark series, we want to look at the, the, the term concussions. Yeah. In the news a lot, uh, we mm -hmm. had a video about it, a movie that came out about it. We know that uh, St. Henry lost a player the other yeah. night to concussion. Yeah. Your take on concussion. Well, you know, I, I, there's a lot of change, and it's still evolving and changing. Our awareness is much better. The medical understanding of it is much better. The equipment is better. We have protocol now that they go through, and I thought the guys down with the St. Henry team did a great job. Time out on the field, they took care of him. When he was ready to get up and get off the field, they did. They were with him on the bench the whole time. And then he wasn't still wasn't feeling too good, so they took him by squad and made sure that he was healthy. That is a good thing. Um, the, the one thing about the equipment is they have equipment that can prevent concussions pretty much, unless you drop them off a 10-story building or something. Harvard in 06 developed a helmet that would prevent concussions, but it's heavier, you know? They don't want to wear. They don't want to be slow. They want... I wore a bike helmet. My pencil neck could hardly hold that thing up, but I didn't get any concussions, you know, so they make that kind of stuff. But the solution is properly fitting helmets. You see the NFL guys, they take their helmet and take it off like that. That is not tight enough. Yep. You used to have to go like this and spread the ears to pull that thing off, and you'd have a headache and creases on your head, but it protected you. They don't want to be protected. They're going to live with concussions, and unfortunately, uh, a lot of them are injured. But they're doing a good job in high school and even college uh, with trying to prevent concussions. Well, my take on that also leads to our next part of the question mark, and that is, is 15 games, mm -hmm. what, it's, what it takes to win a state championship, yeah. Is 15 games too many for a high school kid to play and to do so 15 weeks in a row? Yeah. I'll give you an example. Ohio State wins the national championship 2014. Okay, they were 14 and 1. That's 15 football games. But mm -hmm. they played three weeks, took a week off. Played two weeks, took a week off. Mm -hmm. Then they had uh, from December 6th to January 1st before their first playoff game and another 12 days before they played their yeah. championship game. Yeah. So they're getting breaks in the course of the season. Too many football games, mm -hmm. too many weeks in a row for a high school kid? Well, you, you drew out the scenario uh, that big-time college football gets some time down. Right. You know, and that's good. High school kids don't. You right. play every week. Division three gets one week off, and then they play. You know, they, they don't have any time in between bowl games or any of that kind of stuff. So every division, you can play 10, 11, or 12 games in a regular season based on 3-2-1 division, and then you get some playoffs. 15 is a typical max amount of games that you play if yeah. you want to win the national championship. But high school kids play 15 straight weeks. They get no breaks. Uh, they're 16 and 17-year-old bodies. Yeah, I think it's too much football. You, if you're concerned about yeah. the health of kids, um, let's, let's let them play less. You know, But that's not going to happen. They're well, not going to whack those playoff games. They're too yeah. interesting. They make too much money for the association and the schools. It's a good thing. It's exciting. But you take those kids and beat them up 15 weeks in a row and then say, now go out and wrestle or play basketball. Bodies can't take it. Yeah. Let me throw one more thing at you. My past next-door neighbor and good friend Jerry Cooper, who's down in Tennessee, they start a week ahead of Ohio football, but every team gets a bye week at some point during the season. Mm. Starting now, in July, huh? Now you're starting in July, <laughs> and that's not just football players. It's coaches and band and cheerleaders and yeah. everybody else. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know whether that works or not. Yeah. But anyway, um, something to think about. And it's if I'm a high school kid, you tell me i got to play 15 games to play a state championship? I'm going to yes, do sir. it. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I'm going to yeah. do it. And I yeah. think every coach should coach that that's way, right. too. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go to our bright spot this week. And if you know anything about a closer look, you know we like food. Woo. Hey, we found a good place down at Sydney, and what a beautiful facility yeah. that is. Their concession stand is called the Chow House. What a great name. Mark, of course, pulls out his phone and takes a, a picture <laughs> of the plaque right there describing the football moms at Sydney since 1925 have run the Chow House concession stand, and they had some pretty good choices. They had pulled pork sandwiches. They had walking tacos. I like that name, Chow House. Better than concession yeah, that's stand. That's really good. Yeah. And we got one more I want to show you, too. This is a picture that came from the uh, a game between Franklin and St. Mary's. It was taken at Wayne Huber Heights. Game's over. Competitive football game, playoff game, lots of emotion involved. And the two teams got together afterwards to pray on the field. We always like that. That's a cool thing to see. Yep, strangers there. They didn't even yeah. know each other before That's right. the game. That's really awesome. Really proud of those two schools and a chance to get together and do that. Well, this week for our... Uh, where are they now segment. Earlier in the year, we looked at three area football coaches who had been successful and had gone on and gone out of state. So we thought we'd look at their programs right now and how their season ended up. Jerry Cooper at Seymour, Tennessee, 
Started out 4-0, and lost four games, eventually ended up 5-5, five and five, didn't make the playoffs, but in Tennessee, if you don't make the playoffs, to give you an opportunity to do a bowl-type game situation. Coach Cooper's team won that game over uh, Cokie County, uh, 46-26, they finished 6-5. and five. Mike Fell's team, they also started out 3-0, and then they went 3-3, three and three. they ended up 7-3 and three in the regular season. They went on at Mountain View Mesa, Arizona to play one playoff game. They lost that one, coach team ended up 7-4. and four. And Mike Mock at Glendale, Missouri, what a great year his team had, 11-0 in the regular season. Coach was named Coach of the Year in their area. Uh, they won a playoff game, how about this, over Ozark, 85-44. Alex Houston, who many of you remember in the Kenton area, was the quarterback, of course. 33 of 48, 706 yards passing, nine touchdowns. He connected with eight different receivers during the course of the game. It's like Coach Mock game. Wow. It just, just does, doesn't it? Okay. And yeah, then and it's a good thing that he's healthy again, too. That's a good point. And, of course, they did lose the week after that to Fort Zumwalt yeah, North, 22-52. They finished up 11-1, and as Mark said, congratulations, Coach Mock, because you are a healthy person, too, and your football program's off to a good start. Okay, well, let's look and preview our upcoming games right now. And our first game we want to look at is in Division Three, Region 10. This is Franklin and St. Mary's. Last week, St. Mary's pulled off the trifecta. All three running backs against Franklin were uh, 100 yards plus. Spicer, 173. Fisher, 124. Very tough yards. They started Sean Perry for the first time. He had 11 carries for 100 yards from his wing back position. Uh, off to a great running game. They only had to throw the football once, and St. Mary's scored every time they had the football. Now, they matched up this week with a very talented Troutwood Madison team. Uh, this team lost uh, its first game to Miamisburg 21 28. They've been on a roll since then. They did lose to Wayne, who's also in the playoffs uh, right now. Their running back, Ravion Hargrove, the guy who had such a fine game against Wapak a few years ago, or a few weeks ago, another outstanding year for him. They held his carries down this year. He missed two games with injuries. The maximum times he's carried in the game, 17 times. He's got 1,186 yards and 17 scores. Their quarterback, Markel Stevens Peppers, very, very fine quarterback. Tough, tough uh, battle, battle this week for St. Mary's. We'll see how they play this week against uh, the Troutwood Madison team. Division 4, Region 14, 11 and 1. Ottawa Glandorf takes on Bishop Hartley. They're 9 and 2. They're going to play that game at Bell Fountain. OG, of course, beat Indian Lake 33 28. Hartley beat Port Clinton 44 7. OG has played Hartley three times. They have not got a win yet. Hartley is the defending state champs, and they have a special running back. His name is Marquette Dixon. He ran for 210 yards against Clinton. And on their website, they have a picture of Mr. Dixon with no shirt on. He is a beast. So OG hit him hard, hit him many times, slow him up, and good luck to the Titans. Let's move on then to the Coldwater matchup. As we see into Division 5, Coldwater defeated Greenview last week, 27-24. Neil Mullenkamp, great second half, has a touchdown catch. He has a two touchdown runs of 21 and 16 yards. Coldwater blocks a field goal with 90 seconds left. That kick came from the 11-yard line. That preserved a 27-24 win for the defending state champions. Well, this week they get Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy. First-year coach, coach Mark Mueller, they won the Miami Valley Conference. They have a great running back as well. His name is Keyshawn Gamble. The website says he's six foot, 220, runs a 4'5", 40. He's got offers from the University of Toledo and the University of Miami, but he's holding off because he had a visit to Louisville, and that's where he'd really like to attend. Their quarterback is Danny Vanitowski, 6'2", 190 junior. He started at Indian Hill as a freshman. Last year, transferred to Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy, sat behind an all-league quarterback a year ago. He is now the starting quarterback. This is the 11th time they've been in the playoffs in the 2000s. Coldwater's defeated them a couple of times. We'll see what happens this time as they meet in the regional finals. Let's go to Division 6, Region 24, Marion Local, 11-1. Going to play Mechanicsburg again. They're 12-0. They're going to play that game at Sydney this year. Last year, they were at Bell Fountain. Marion Local kicked a late field goal to win 9-7. Of course, Marion Local coming off a shutout over St. Henry, 22-0. That is not out of the ordinary for that defense. They gave 142 total yards to St. Henry. Caleb Romero is the quarterback and the guy that makes Mechanicsburg go. He is a three-time state wrestling champion. He has not lost a wrestling match in high school. He's a runner, not a thrower. Last year, Marion Local begged him to throw. He did with very limited success, and Marion Local was able to win that football game. Moving on to the Macomb Panthers, and they match up with the Crestview Knights. Macomb, of course, outstanding year that they've had. 
Uh, five shutouts in their 12 football games, four more they gave up one score or less, led by Malachi Abbott. He is 23 of 29 with one interception, 423 yards and five scores in the playoffs. He also has three TD runs as well. Crestview, on the other hand, Drew Klein, what a year the sophomore quarterback has had for them. In the playoffs, he is 12 for 20 and 281 yards and a score throwing the football, but he's rushed for eight touchdowns as well. Crestview has given up 417 yards through the air in two games. If Malachi Abbott gets hot, it would be a tough game for Crestview. But on the other hand, McCombs given up some yardage on the ground, and Crestview runs it very well. Big matchup this week at Lima Stadium. Staying with Division 7, Region 28, it's a MAC rematch. Fort Recovery, Minster, both 8-4. and four. They're going to play at Walpock. Fort Recovery coming off that win over number one seeded Covington, 42-14. Of course, Minster, as Mark mentioned, beat USV. Fort Recovery had a scoring outburst against that number one seeded team. Minster scored in 14 seconds of the first quarter and was up 41-0 at half. There's four teams from the MAC left. This is a MAC rematch. Be interesting to see how it is second time around. Let's take a look at our playoff broadcast schedule then this week. You and I will be at the Mechanicsburg Marion local game. And then on Saturday, we'll see OG and Bishop Hartley Saturday night. We see Crestview, Macomb, Minster and Fort Recovery, Coldwater and Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy moves to Sunday evening. Stay tuned. Lots of great high school football. And we'll look forward to bringing you the playoffs and next week's show as well. You've been watching High School Football on WOSN.